the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be holy. God's fire. For the second component of the mandate that Jesus left with the church is called discipleship. Please write it down. Discipleship. The second component, discipleship. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All authority in heaven is given to me in heaven and earth. 19. Go ye therefore, now watch this now, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 20. Teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And while you are about the business of teaching and guiding them to observe, I am with you all way to the ends of the earth. The second component of this mandate Jesus gave us, the Great Commission, is discipleship. What is discipleship? The mentorship of believers to attain maturity and stature through doctrine. The mentorship of believers to attain unto maturity and stature through doctrine. This is what the Bible calls discipleship. The mentorship of believers, those who are now saved, to attain unto maturity and stature through doctrine. Another definition of discipleship, helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom. Helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom through the teaching ministry. Please write. Helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom, the ways of God, through the teaching ministry. So we see that the first component of the Great Commission has to do with preaching the gospel. The second component has to do with maturing believers. Mentoring them to maturity and stature through doctrine. The end product I wrote here of discipleship is personal transformation and maturity the end product of discipleship whatever you call discipleship you know whether it is biblical discipleship if it leads to personal transformation and maturity that means when you submit believers to any body of truth whatsoever for that matter if it does not translate to personal transformation and maturity it is not biblical discipleship are we learning so component number one world evangelization component number two is discipleship now do you know that component number two is the primary reason for the physical convergence of believers what you call church the ecclesia as a local assembly is supposed to be an authorized platform where believers converge consistently are we together there has to be a central point of convergence so that believers are mentored methodically line upon line precept upon precept in acts 2 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers so they had a place of convergence consistently the purpose of church is not just to tie men who are loyal to one man of god respectfully speaking no church is greater than that it is supposed to be a place of convergence are we together where believers come and they are mentored to be effective witnesses effective communicators of the gospel and effective people to live their lives effectively and then to be agents of transformation as far as the program of God is concerned many aspects of the Great Commission focus on world evangelization and we ignore discipleship this is the reason why when you get your harvest from the farm please look up 
I've said it here many times. Imagine with me that you go to the farm and you harvest, say, tomato or yam or whatever it is, and you just keep it in the field there and you do not take it into processes to package it. What begins to happen to it? It begins to decay. This is the challenge we have in the body of Christ. So we have several people who have encountered Jesus genuinely, but because of the absence of growth and maturity, some of them even attain onto leadership positions just because of longevity of their stay, not using the index of transformation and maturity. So if you have, respectfully speaking, a pastor or a leader or a head of department who now has influence to perform functions within the church or the program of God and that person has not been discipled he will only mentor people from the lens of his or her limitations are we together discipleship is very important and now I know that when we talk about discipleship it means many things to many people I'm talking about biblical discipleship the end of discipleship is not slavery and subjugation. The end of discipleship is liberty by communication of doctrine. I told you, you know it is biblical discipleship. If at the end of it, there is personal transformation and there is maturity. So here is a believer who is a product of world evangelization. Now he has come to Jesus Christ and he's now allotted by grace. Remember, there is one who is called the Lord of the harvest and he's the one who allots the souls to the various platforms. All that you have given me, Jesus said, I have kept. Nobody has the power to bring members to himself. It is God that allocates people based on many factors, including the faithfulness and the preparedness of the teaching priests. Are we together now? Yes. So when God brings people to koinonia and God brings people to any ministry, he's empowering you to teach them and to mentor them, to show them the ways of God. Is the reason why as much as possible the central focus in every church activity as much as possible must be the teaching of the word now respectfully speaking with all due respect sometimes we need to manage except for special occasions I understand but it, the, the centrality of a church activity it should be centered around platforms that impart understanding if you have, for instance, a church service of three hours and it is largely spent doing a lot of things that do not translate to teaching, then justice is not being done to the mentoring and the maturity of the people because the truth is it takes time to learn the ways of God. Are we together? Papa Hagen and many of the blessed memory, the reason why their products were solid people was because they spent time teaching they spend time imparting knowledge sometimes they would have meetings for days and they were largely word-based meetings look at jesus the ratio of his teaching ministry to impartation three and a half years to one day the moment the disciples were with him all right gentlemen sit down occasionally a crowd will come and he turns it into a crusade and when he's done healing and doing all of that go home then he sits with the disciples and says, let's continue. That was all he did for three and a half years. And then he said, now that you know, tarry until you be empowered. Look at the product of Jesus' mentorship. You want to know how well Jesus performed? Go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. When the Holy Ghost came, Peter said, no, we are not in ignorance. He said, this is that. And this guy began. That was his first official sermon. From a student in training to now an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and he defended the faith with intelligence. This guy said, look at his exegesis of scripture. He was preaching the gospel. He started from David. He now went to Joel, now to Psalms and he ended his sermon by saying, this same Jesus whom you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. Who will not be caught to the heart after that sermon? The Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? And he said, repent for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. And then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children and so on and so forth. Many believers today, the quality of believers that we have, respectfully speaking in the body of Christ, is largely a product 
of poor or imbalanced mentorship. So the lopsidedness in the quality of believers that are being produced, you can know the quality of discipleship be within any predefined territory by random sampling believers and testing their level of maturity and their level of transformation against factors like prayer, how they respond to challenges, their orientation about material wealth with respect to God's eternal standpoint. Are we together? All of these indices are parameters that you can use to literally gauge the maturity level of a believer. It then means that we have a responsibility as believers and especially as those who have been privileged to serve at the altar to ensure that we take the issue of discipleship very seriously to methodically grow and build believers until they attain a state of transformation and maturity. I have told us here that the value of empowerment upon a believer is when the anointing comes upon a mind that is transformed. Now notice, the gospel deals essentially with the heart or the spirit of man. Transformation by the teaching ministry deals essentially with the mind. The great commission is essentially a battle for the hearts and the minds of men. The hearts and the minds of men. The hearts and the minds of men. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked upon the earth, his emphasis was on the minds and the hearts of men. Say discipleship. One more time, please shout it. Say discipleship. And it is everybody's business when a father as a priest takes responsibility as a disciple to mentor and teach the children and all who are within your care the quality of the product that comes from your house will be added to the school that the children go to. Am I right on that? Now, you make the job easy for teachers because well-behaved students are already on their way the, the well-behaved children will become well-behaved students. In addition to the mentorship that happens within the school, you now begin to produce products that can influence their peers positively. You've heard me say every national problem was eventually a regional problem, eventually or at the start, a family problem that was a product of carelessness and neglect. Every arm robber came from a home. Everyone disturbing society came from a home. And everyone today who is a joy to every society came from a home. A home there does not just mean a biological place. Even the church is a home. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. The major problem I will tell you that has affected the quality of believers in Nigeria, in Africa, and globally so, is the ill health or, or the, the imbalance of discipleship. The, the lapse in understanding and approach as far as discipleship is concerned. You cannot raise mighty men by communicating substandard spiritual truths. It does not happen that way. Ordinary men came to David in the cave of Adullam and the Bible says he mentored them and produced men of power that he called them the men of David. These men were so dexterous and powerful. These are the kinds of men the kinds of men that God is looking for in this end time. And it is going to be through the instrumentality of discipleship. You are sitting under this teaching grace now. You are learning the ways of God. When life, when life comes to you in whatever form it comes, it is on the strength of the truths that you know that you are able to stand. Am I right on that? If you have been taught, for instance, that challenges are not unusual for the believer, when you find out that you are confronting challenges, you will not begin to make statements like, God, where are you? Rather, you will find out what does the Bible say should be the believer's approach and attitude in the midst of challenges. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. So when as a matured believer, properly mentored, in the face of challenges, while one person is languishing and shouting for you as a believer, there has been a scriptural mindset that you have been given. Are we together? Yes. When you lose a loved one, if you have been properly mentored, 
part of the mentorship you should have received is how to manage people who transit in glory because Paul in mentoring the church he let us know that when people die in Christ they are not dead they sleep and so in the midst of the pain that comes by being a human being you are comforted by the fact that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord maturity has given you the fortitude to stand are we together now yes if you are in a region where you are facing tribulation and persecution in the office instead of bending to compromise because of proper discipleship you know the bible says count it all joy my brethren when you face diverse persecutions knowing this that the trying of your faith walketh patience on the strength of that maturity you can stand even if to stand alone jesus said in this world you will have tribulations but be of good cheer i have overcome the world so you may cry but you still stand for righteousness that is the product of mentorship not evangelism most believers chicken in the face of everything because capacity has not been built through discipleship he says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength is small are we together if you have been taught the purpose of wealth when god blesses you it does not bring pride because mentorship has balanced your understanding that everything in the kingdom finds its relevance as it is connected to purpose so you can be a billionaire and yet you can serve in the house of god with humility because you know that a man can receive nothing except it is given to him are you seeing now your life is brought to order because of discipleship and maturity how about the place of character now you learn that the grace and anointing can lift you but it takes character to remain there my little children he says of whom i travel until christ be formed in you so when you come with your lusts and anger and whatever you are not ashamed you come before the lord like a threshing floor knowing that in his presence there is the washing of the water by the word are we blessed discipleship is the only hope for the maturity of the believer methodically mentoring believers and holistically so I have always been an advocate of balanced mentorship and maturity so your spiritual life is covered your life as far as relating with the cosmos is covered intelligence that translates to the quality of your life is covered are we together no aspect of your life is left without you receiving wholesome teaching when i'm teaching you on finance i will teach it as if there is nothing else to teach when i'm teaching on soul winning i will teach as if there is nothing else to teach because it is line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little when you are teaching on the gift of the spirit you help the believer to understand and appreciate that there is such a reality as the gift of the spirit but then that the gift of the spirit only profits the body when it is done decently and in order many of the excesses within the body of christ includes the nigerian church the african church and respectfully speaking world over is a direct product of the inefficiency in discipleship our discipleship models must be reviewed because there are many discipleship models that end up leading to slavery there are many discipleship models that do not bring liberty respectfully speaking there are many discipleship models that simply bind people across a sect and does not bring liberty to be kingdom ambassadors. So when I talk about discipleship, the true proof that you have been discipled is your personal transformation and your maturity. What made you cry yesterday no longer makes you cry today because you have grown. And talking about growth, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 11 please give it to us 13 11 first Corinthians let's read together ready one to read when I was a child I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things this is the biblical index to measure maturity your thoughts your words that you have been so transformed you approach life from a superior standpoint 
If someone looks at you and says you're a failure, it does not become a prayer point. Mentorship has so built you. You are so elevated in your mind, you will not demean your transformation by paying attention to mundane things. You have been so indoctrinated that you are seated with Christ. You are of a superior race in Christ. That if someone looks at you and says you will not make it, your prayer will be for the person because you've been taught. You see that now as an example. The mandate that Jesus gave us requires proper discipleship to raise a very, very healthy, a very vibrant army for him. And this is the assignment that God has given the fivefold according to Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 18. Ephesians 4 from verse 18. Did I get that right? Help me. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. And the Bible says he gave some apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, 11, my apologies. He says, for the edifying, verse 12 now, perfecting or maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That means the fivefold ministry in its entirety is God's strategy designed to help believers attain unto maturity, verse 13 says. It says, till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the fullness of Christ, the fullness of Christ. He's talking to people who are already saved, but he's saying there is a, an experience of the fullness of Christ that we need to come into. If you're understanding me, shout a loud amen. amen. Your response to life your response to all the things that happen around your life is a testament as to how much you have been transformed. Hallelujah. That is the reason why the Bible says not many people should pre presume to be teachers because our judgment as teachers will be higher. You know why? God will say, I gave you access to the minds of millions for 20 years, for 30 years, for 40 years. What did you teach them? You can literally tilt a whole generation towards error because of the power of teaching. And you can direct a generation back when Satan wants to destroy the sheep the first thing he does is to corrupt or destroy the shepherd it is very easy to destroy the sheep when the shepherd is out of balance out of reach out of order are we together that is why as shepherds we depend on god with all our lives the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall make straight your path. When it has to do with this mission of transformation and discipleship, there are no masters there. Because we are all students continually learning. We lean consistently on his grace as we help to make our contributions as far as building a robust army for the king is concerned. Your grace your grace i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me it's your grace your grace i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me my dear people let me give you a very big secret the greatest gift you can give any man of God is not a car the greatest gift you can give any man of God is not a house it's not a lot and money in the account as wonderful as that is the greatest gift you can give a man of God is submission to be transformed by the truth that comes from him to you any man of god who loves jesus and loves the people committed to him the greatest joy of any man of god i know who sincerely loves god and loves his people is to see them evolve into superior spiritual versions in response to the truth 
that he's bringing that a weak man someone who came january february right now you look at this lady this gentleman you are filled with the holy spirit walking in the things of god loving jesus being used by jesus to do great things for the kingdom and then making personal progress in your life and destiny there is nothing that consoles and rewards a teaching priest as transformation if you become rich and you are not transformed it's still a trouble for the man nobody wants to see ill-built people around him we want to see dexterity and stature and power from the opening of your lips it shows the how you were properly mentored that the way you speak your words are communicated with grace in your heart unto the lord your speaking has been cultured your life has come under divine order and people will usually ask you they will say things like which church do you attend is th these are all attempts to say who taught you you are a sound product listen there are schools today that when wayek result wayek the, the the west african exam in nigeria or jam because of the performance that the students have am i right on that people will usually go and say come we need to examine the curriculum because it's not that the students magically evolve to become the best they were subject to a kind of strategy that produced that result so what we aim to do by the Spirit of God is to methodically pass us through a spiritual system line upon line can I tell you I submit to you by the authority of Scripture that if you submit yourself to the truths that you are hearing week after week with your heart being open the opening of your heart is your own responsibility are we together it is impossible to remain a failure by every and all standards your life will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder because the truths you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables they have been tested not just in our lives they have been tested in the lives of those that we have received the baton from and the bible says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture you want anointing there is a strategy you want wisdom there is a strategy you want favor there is a strategy you want increase that god should lift you and cause your voice to be heard across the nations it is not luck mentorship is the key to stature and transformation is someone learning that is why when satan attacks your passion and your desire to come to the house of god it is a real attack hallelujah because he knows that once the seed has been sown you cannot stop the harvest the only way to stop the harvest is to stop the seed from getting there in the first place and if he if he cannot get you to come to the house of god or stop you from coming to the house of God the next assignment becomes to turn your heart to a stony ground so that even if good seed comes upon it like the parable of the sower the Bible says they that did not produce were those who heard the word they did not understand it they didn't mix it with faith and it did not produce anything but in the name of Jesus there's someone who is seated here week after week you may not understand what god is doing in your life but there is a wonder that is that is that is evolving believe me as you're submitting yourself do you know i have met people and have been humbled by their depth of passion and sincerely speaking without exaggeration as much as i've traveled across the globe i have seen people and i've been humbled by their their sense of discipleship some of them do not have the privilege to be here directly but they have made up themselves they've made up their minds to submit themselves to truth and you sit with them for five minutes the excellency of their understanding even challenges you as a man of god whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me wherever you want to go lord you can go Can 
I tell you, the greatest way to say yes to Jesus is not saying yes, is preparing to be used by him. Hear me again. The greatest way to say yes to Jesus is not to verbalize yes. You need that when it has to do with salvation. The greatest way to say yes is not to say yes, is to be prepared. If I ask you, come to my house and you pick my call and say, I am coming and go back to cover yourself with blanket. Are you really coming? The greater, you may not even answer me, but get up and jump to the bathroom. I see your readiness to come by your preparation. There are many tongue talkers. There are many people, oh God, use me. But the, the submission to be trained and to be built, to become that battle axe, there is laxity. And you see, let me tell you an advantage that we have. And, and I say this, God sees my heart. It's not because I'm the one speaking. If you ever have the opportunity to have a teaching priest that is sound in doctrine and loves you sincerely, go back and lie down and roll before God and say, Lord, thank you for making my journey to knowing you and being used by you easy. Most people have no understanding. Let me tell you this. And I say it on behalf of every serious man of God. Most people have no idea the labor and the burden of being a man of God. Most times we just see maybe protocols, some little blessings that come, and especially younger believers, they just admire, and that, 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 that glamour is fueling their lust. All that is in their mind is the Jeep the man of God entered. All that is in their mind is the, the whole paraphernalia. These are all support systems just to make it easy. Let me tell you, the labor of the word is real labor. To sit down and get life applicable teachings. I preach an average of two to three sermons every week. I've done this for as long as I know. It take, under no circumstance, no matter where I travel around the world, if I will be around on Sunday, I must make sure the message to give God's people is fresh, is ready to be served. That is labor that comes by love. Listen. I'm not just saying this to, I, I hope you, I, when I teach like this, I get so uncomfortable. It's just that the truth has to be said. Submitting to the ministry of a teaching priest indeed, bringing balance and a holistic capture of the truths that number one, help you to know God. Number two, help you to understand the kingdom. And number three, help to produce personal excellence in your life keeping you effective from an eternal standpoint and excelling within the cosmos. I am telling you, it is a blessing. Many believers take for granted the labor that brings truths that build them. You'll be surprised someone who has been failing in business. You just come when a financial series is being taught and you get one, one truth that brings balance to your life. Managing pride, managing anger, managing lust, managing all kinds of things that would destroy you. How about the manifestation of the power of God? Witchcraft and curses and yokes from anywhere to anywhere and you come together. Those spirits join you to church and yet you leave them behind and go back as a free man. All kinds of yokes. Apostle for 20 years, I've not found liberty in my life. And God says, go there. I'm the one who is preparing this teaching priest. I know what I put in them. You go and sit down there and watch what happens. But you see, the goal is not for you to be a member and just keep watching. No, there is a training. Please listen to me. There is an equipping it is a very painful thing to any man of God if you have been around his church or the spiritual circle for a long time and the evidence of transformation is not in you. Even if you are a giver, it is more than money. It is your transformation. That I was here, I taught like a child, I understood like a child. Look my spiritual understanding now. When you are assessed by life across a range of areas, your spiritual life, your understanding about Satan, about God, about life, about challenges, about victory, about success. 
you have been so fashioned and so framed. Now God can send you to go and be a man of God. That cry, remember when he sent you, you may have come as an usher, but your destiny is to be a prophet, an apostle to the nations. Mentorship is what evolves you from that cleaner to a mighty man. Men do not rise just because time is passing. Men rise upon the quality of the information, the sound understanding that is being imputed into their spirits. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And then let me submit to you, and I'm saying this respectfully. When God grants you access to come across the life of people who genuinely have results, respect that atmosphere most we live in a world where people downplay results as if it is by it's just lucky no no consistency is proof of mastery you can have short-time results by luck but you cannot have sustainable results by luck the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Spirit, Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire. Let your mind be Holy God's fire.